it's a cool unseasonably cool morning in the month of July and I find myself in a place called Enderby Enderby is the place after which the Enderby Quartet The protagonist, the main protagonist of the Enderby Quartet of Burgess novels uh, is named after. And I thought I'd come and have a look at this small town. It's just a few miles from the Leicester suburb of Aylston where Burgess and Lynn spent a short time in the late 50s, just a month or two, I believe, on furlough from Burgess's job in Malaya. Actually, that's not strictly accurate. He had completed his Malayan tour and had returned and began looking for for jobs and then was appointed to the post in Brunei, so it's not quite right to say he was on furlough. But nevertheless, it was a kind of interlude for Burgess and Lynn. And it resulted in that magnificent novel, The Right to an Answer. Burgess may very well have visited this town. Uh, since it's so close to Elston, he will have known of it. Possibly he drank at this pub here. With Lynn, uh, they would have spent a lot of time together in public houses. Possibly here at the Nag's Head, they may have spent some time. As I walk through Enderby, I'm reminded of the Scandal <coughs> unleashed by Burgess when he reviewed his own novel inside Mr. Enderby uh, for the Yorkshire Post. What is fascinating about this incident is that it demonstrated a vast sense of humour failure on the part of the, the, I don't know, the editor or the literary editor or whatever of the Yorkshire Post. The British uh, often pride themselves on their sense of humour. But here was an example of how Uh, sense of humour failed utterly. In his review of Inside in Mr. Enderby, which I believe was had been published under uh, the pseudonym Joseph Kell. In his review of Inside Mr. Enderby, Burgess wrote, 
this is, in many ways, a dirty book. It is full of bowel blasts and flatulent borborigms, emetic meals and halitosis. It may well make some people sick. It turns sex, religion, the state into a series of laughing stocks. The book itself is a laughing stock. And for this, uh, which was hardly a very uh, positive review of his own novel, he was sacked from the august Yorkshire Post. Ah, here we arrive. The Enderby Conservative Club. Hmm. I wonder what Burgess would have thought about the Enderby Conservative Club. I don't think Burgess had much time for politicians. Uh, I'm not sure. He had a very mature outlook towards uh, policy. I mean, he said, he wrote of uh, one Conservative leader and Prime Minister, Edward Heath, very, very early on. Uh, he stated, Burgess stated, there's no doubt that there is a homosexual mafia. Indeed, we had a homosexual prime minister, Edward Heath. He's been very clever about it. He's never been found accosting little boys. It may have been hushed up. This is what uh, Burgess had to say about Edward Heath. Edward Heath, arguably Britain's worst Prime Minister since World War II. Uh, and uh, he was under no illusions about the many shortcomings of, of other British Conservative politicians, such as Margaret Thatcher. Burgess described Margaret Thatcher aptly, in my view, as a bossy head prefect. And I don't know if you remember, if you know much about recent British history, uh, there's no special reason why you should take too much interest in it, but uh, Margaret Thatcher was succeeded as Conservative Party leader and Prime Minister by someone called John Major whom Anthony Burgess succinctly described as mediocrity's monument. I repeat, Anthony Burgess on political matters showed a considerable maturity. He the thing about Anthony Burgess is he's very grown up uh, very early on. He had this to say about uh, politics in general. Our party leaders are perhaps by virtue or vice of the vocation they have chosen curiously empty and it is doubtful whether ageing will improve their condition. <laughs>